Hey there, and welcome to part 2.1 of creating a shoot media character in Blender. This video is going to be kind of an offshoot from the main series because I'm going to be using GIMP instead of Blender, and it's going to be kind of specific to this character. So this step is, could be very different depending on the textures that you have, but um, hopefully I'll try and make this stuff that I show here applicable to this kind of thing in general, and hopefully applicable to uh, other image editors as well. So. Now I'm going to switch over to GIMP and I'm going to open the face texture in GIMP. You can use Photoshop if you want. In my case, I'm just using GIMP. It really doesn't matter. It will be the setup will be a little bit different, but generally it's the exact same thing. Okay. There we go. So that's the face texture. Now I want to fit the rest of the textures beside this. So what I'm going to do is do a canvas size and I'm gonna make that lock that so that it um, keeps the aspect ratio multiply by two and it should automatically fix the height as well and resize now I'm gonna go back here again and I'm just gonna drag and drop body as well as hands and mouth Okay, so the mouth texture is a lot is actually half the size of the rest, and it's only 1024 by uh, the same amount 1024. Um, so first, I'm going to move the arms texture up and the body texture down, so that none of them are overlapping. Now, in this case, I'm going to edit this texture because if I go back to Blender, I go to the head, this part, these parts down here are not used, and neither is this eye, and the eye's mouth is only using this, it's only using the teeth and the tongue, and it would be using this, but that's in the wrong place, so yeah. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to layer this on top of this, so that it's easier to see, so I'm going to go with the lasso tool. Um, and I'm going to just simply cut this portion of the tongue out. I'm going to duplicate this texture, and I'm going to invert my selection and click delete. So now, if I unselect and I hide the previous texture, all I have left is the tongue. And now I'm going to do that same thing again, but with the teeth. Just kind of along here so that I get just the portion I want. Do the same thing, enter the selection, press delete. Now I've just got these two parts left. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to drag it over here. And I'm going to put it right in the corner, just like that. And this part... Since it doesn't fit quite, I'm actually going to do a layer, where is it, transform, rotate 180 degrees, whoops, that's the wrong texture, um, transform, rotate 180 degrees, so it's just like that, so that it's fish, fishing that way, and now I'm going to do a layer, transform, flip horizontally, just like that, so now it'll fit in snug, just something like that. I'm going to leave a little bit of space so that the textures don't quite overlap or anything like that. Um, so that can fit just like that. Now, all I'm missing is the gun from the Storm Man. So if I go back over to here, out a little bit, I'll find my Storm Man. Since the Storm Man is directly from Shumania, it has all the textures that I would need. So if I open up the body, you'll see that it has everything I need. I just want, if I go to the here, I just want this area that is uh, highlighted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna UV, export UV layout, all UVs just in case it doesn't get all of them, and I'm just gonna export that. Now that is gonna give me a, um, I go back out into here again. I drag this over top. 
now I have a texture over top to show me where the UVs line up and I can just cut that portion out. Now what I also want to cut out is the rest of the textures because I can use those as well so I don't have to remake any of them for that part. So I'm going to hold shift, select those, drag them in. Now I have all those. Now the mask doesn't actually affect this at all so I can really just delete it and deal with that deal with that later. Um, then we have the energy, I'll just hide that. Move these down below. And so I just want to deal with this one right now. And so this might not be a case for your model. You might have to create some textures yourself, which um, there are a couple good sites for that. Um, if you go to CG textures, they have lots of really good textures there, which you can download and uh, use for any projects you want. Now I can do the same thing, invert the selection, and make sure this is selected and click delete. But in this case, it goes white, and that is because there is no alpha channel. So I'm going to click that, now it has an alpha channel. Now that'll disappear and I'll just have this left. Now I want to select the energy, add an alpha channel, delete. This one will have an alpha channel already since it's, it has um, some transparency in the specular. So I can delete that, add an alpha channel, I'll actually show this first. There we go, and delete that. So now I have just a bunch of textures with just the section that I want. Now, to make this easier to move over, I'm going to do an image, auto crop. Now I have just this portion. So what I want to do is just right now, I'm just going to copy this one texture over. So I'm going to do edit, copy visible. Now go back here and edit, paste as new layer. So this texture is very small compared to these larger textures. It's still a multiple of two, which is what you need for all your textures. Right now I have a texture that is going to be 4096 by 4096. Most of these are 1024 by 1024. This one was originally 2048 by 1024 actually 20, 2048 by 1024 by 2048 but I cut it up to a very small section so it's very small now so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna scale it up to a larger size in this case you might not want to do it for some of your textures because now actually I don't want there we go because now if you look at the texture it is kind of blurry it's not exactly, it's not perfect compared, it's not very comparable to these very, very crisp textures. So, what I'm going to do with this texture is I'm actually going to blur it to make it kind of look a little bit like this where it's very clean. To do that, I'll just use the blur tool. This is very specific to this model. So, I think I'm going to skip over most of it. I'll just show a little example here. I'm just going to blur this, scale up a little bit blur it just blurring it up it will be very different for your own model for and you might not have to do any like anything like this at all for your own model if all the textures are the right size okay so now this has been fully blurred out you can see it's much smoother now it looks kind of like this I think it's good enough so we'll leave it at that um, now I'm gonna copy over the rest of these textures so I'll take the energy copy visible and edit paste as new layer and then I'll have to also scale this one up. Make sure I do it the same amount. Just like that. And drag it over so that it is also lining up just with the corner. Just like that. Go back here. Hide those. So I just have this one. That is very very transparent because there are two different portions to the specular which I am not entirely sure if they make a difference but they do look different so I assume it does something slightly different now last one copy visible edit paste as new layer usually you should scale things in doubles because generally it, it just works better overall and also lots of games specifically 
games like to have textures that are in multiples of two. So there we got that, just like that. Cut out the way we like it. Um, so now we need to create the texture, the same textures, the normal texture and the specular texture for the rest of this. So what I'm going to do is hide all of these like that. I'm actually going to name these as well. So this was the energy logical gun underscore E. And gun underscore N. Usually it's a good idea to name your textures just because once you get a lot of them, it gets kind of hard to figure out which one's which. Okay, so I just want this portion, so I'll do a copy visible and paste as layer. They might not have that option, so I'll do a copy visible and paste as layer. So now I have one layer on top of everything else that is different. That is just, that is all that is visible right now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that layer, I'm going to duplicate it first, and I'll hide the background one, and I'll make this into a normal map. So both GIMP and Photoshop do not come with a normal map um, plugin. You can either, I, I believe there's an NVIDIA plugin, NVIDIA um, normal map plugin, which you can just find on the internet somewhere. I don't know where it is for for Photoshop. And then if you look up GIMP normal app, there's also a plugin. And once you download that and put it where it should be, then uh, if you go map, normal, normal app, then that will open that up. And then you'll have a little preview here. I'm going to do a five by five. It really doesn't make that big a difference. It's just how it uh, filters it properly. I'm going to scale it up two times. You can mess around with it and try multiple different filters or scales or whatever to see what you like best. There we go. So you can see it's got made these uh, lines that you can kind of see some uh, some 3D kind of to it that uh, fr that is making from the lines in the texture. So that is the normal. Now we want to make the specular. So this I'm for the specular. I'm going to make two different textures. One that is the main texture and one that is the alpha channel that I'll go over top to make it transparent. So I'm going to duplicate this. One of them I'm going to make. I'm going to leave a little bit of color in. So I'm basically just going to do contrast. I'm going to up the contrast a lot and up the brightness or lower the brightness very low. Not that much. Something like that. So that you can see a little bit of the tones in it and that will kind of, I believe that kind of shines through in the, uh, the uh, color that the shininess gives off is the if it's the color there. So now this one, I'm just gonna make it a lot darker. In this case, this model does not have anything that's actually shiny. So all I'm gonna do is just make it a lot, lot darker. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this with Control C, and I'm gonna add a layer mask like that, and press Control V to paste it. Now, it won't actually show up, so I'll use the selection tool, just click, and it should apply it. Now, if I delete this layer, you'll see it almost disappears because it's very, very, very light. But if I do a um, show layer mask, you can see this is how dark it is. So that is the texture that we want for that, and then this goes with this, which is also very, very light. But it's kind of shiny because it is a metal weapon. So I'm going to leave that like that. And actually, what I'm going to do first is uh, name this, hide it. And I'm going to now export the diffuse layer. There we go. So I'm going to do file, export. So. I'm going to name this bl 2 salvador underscore d dot tga and this is so d underscore d is uh, the type so this is diffuse dot tga is the type is the image file type you want 
and um, you're going to want TGA because that's the file type that the exporter will use. You can either have a .dds, and in that case, because that's so pretty much the exporter will convert the file to .dds. But the TGA files are a lot easier to work with in Blender, especially. So those are the kind of files that you really want to be using. And BL2 Salvador is just the name that you're going to have in front of every single one of these um, textures. So I'm going to export that. Export. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to save it as just an XEF, which is the GIMP format. So I can go back to it later. So in the next video, we'll be back on track with Blender for part three, where we will work with the armature to rig the character for the game. If this video is useful to you, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe to see the new videos when I post them up. Thanks for watching.